I'm here to share with you some of the experiences um, that we had in the dead zone. Yaruswood is a place where none of the women who are in there deserves to be there. We call it a mental detention center. Because there we undergo a lot of struggles. But as Tony said, the women in there are not losers, they are fighters. We organize ourselves, come together, because we know together we can make it. When we are united, united against a common or in order to achieve something, we go to end the struggle. So the women in there, we have undergone a lot of different, different, different things. That luckily, the case that has been published is an example, but that's just the tip of an iceberg. A lot of things happen there. But it's only when you have been in detention, you know. Because psychologically, you are tortured. Yes. You are there, time as a liar. Whatever you said is a lie. Yes. They want us to have the body of proof. And we know some of the cases we have, it's like you have to explain what you undergo or what you went through. You don't have photos, you don't have newspaper articles, you don't have, you know, letters from your family members or whatsoever. But that doesn't mean that all what we have been saying is lies, it's true. So if we have been isolated into the hands of those who took advantage of the situation because of the condition we found ourselves in, and the public are silenced over it, it will make any changes. So we are here to speak about the women who are in Yansut at this point in time and those who have been there. Because if you come out of that place, you are no longer yourself. You know, you have to look behind your shoulders before speaking. Because some, at some point you have lost your confidence. Because if you are looked at as being a liar, you feel that no one trusts you anymore. No matter what you say or do, people will not listen to you. To them, you don't even exist. So we have to end that struggle because what we need is we have to come together and help to fight all the problems that we face here. For example, there are some people in Yazoo who have been in detention for more than two years. We have a woman in there who is going to be two years next month, November. She's using Zima frame to work. She had got an accident in Yalsu. But still now she's in detention. She has to wear a pampas because she had got bladder problems. She got back injury. But yet still they think that she's faking it up. There are women there who are going mad. Excuse my language. Because little things can trigger the mental conditions of people. We all know that. So there are people there who are losing it. They don't know where they are. They don't know what to do, and there is no one there to support them. There are women who are there who have been sexually abused, and they are afraid to speak about it. This is happening there. It will continue to happen there until we close down that place. So the solution to that problem is to close down the household. Detention center, especially Yaswood. 
seeking asylum, I don't think it's a crime. All we are asking is for protection. But where is the protection? Especially they put us in detention for five months, six months, a year, and they say we, we, we have the right to be protected. I don't think that's protection. Like men bashing into your room while you are naked, the so-called officers, and without even saying a word, I'm sorry. They bash into your room. I believe a woman should have a privacy, but they don't do that. They just bash into your room without knocking your door. Or they make silly questions. Oh my God, you look hot. Oh, look at the bar. That in detention, where is the protection? So, please, we are really begging. You people have to do something about this. I don't think anyone deserves to be in detention. I don't really have much to say. Thank you. Privacy there. There's always torture there. They are always on um, paracetamol, and when you are sick, and you took, if you took your tablets with you, you have been de denied some days to have your medication. And when you are walking, as for me, I fell down there twice. No special attention was paid to me. And when you are walking, men will wink their eyes at you and laugh at you and ask them, are you okay? It was very, it, it was a torture for me and those of us who had been in that state, it was three of us at that age, over 60 in that, at, in that state. They never respected us. We were nothing to be respected. They will walk into your room at any time and when you tell them you want to kill yourself, that's the time they are going to torture you more and more. When you want, you tell them you are not going home because of what you have experienced, they will tell you, you don't believe what you have told us. You have to go to your country. It's a country where you have to go and stay in one part. As for me, I can't go to my country up to today because wherever I go, I had been a teacher, been transferred whenever my husband was transferred, and been transferred when I was a single woman, and I know every part of Sierra Leone. And wherever I go, people tend to know me. Even here in Britain, I've visited few places and I've found my students that have taught in the early 60s, early 70s, 80s, 90s. They are all here and they still recognize me. Sometimes they will come, I won't even recognize them because I, 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 children grow but adults don't grow anymore, so I miss them. So it's a university of torture. No privacy is observed there. They, don't re they are no respecter of age. They said age is the number. And today, everything, it doesn't matter how you walk there. It doesn't matter what happens to you there. They are not bothered to know. Yes, they bring you... They make you to be, we are emotionally tortured when you are at your school. Thank you.